What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Today's video it is going to be doing post commentary. We're not going to do the live commentary because this is already coming out really late at night. So I wanted to make sure that I get it up, you know, at a decent time before I head to bed tonight. So uh, in terms of what we were trying to do today, I decided to trial out Uta as the GP leader once again. You know, obviously due to this season being so heavily focused on Int and Driven, I felt like it it was like a pretty safe choice. But you'll see that towards the end of this video that we do end up switching it back up to the Old Faithful. And if you don't know who Old Faithful is, you're going to find out towards the end of this video. Uh, because we do get into a bit of a, of a risky situation where we had the chance of losing. Uh, and you'll see how that plays out towards the end here. Anyways, as for this first match, you're going to be against an opposing Uta leader. And this first game is going to be Int versus Dex. I felt pretty comfortable that Int could pretty much take on just about any team. The only teams that I don't feel comfortable using my Int team against is opposing Int teams. And also, there is a really weird looking striker team that is making the rounds currently. It will be showcased in this video too. You guys are going to see. It's It doesn't look that impressive on paper, but what it's able to do is fascinating. So... We'll showcase that once we get to it. But yeah, I feel like anything that isn't that weird striker team or is, you know, the like an opposing int team, the int team feels very good against most things and it is able to secure the job here. Due to the special of Moria, who he gives himself CT, he receives a lot of CT with a lot of the effects during this season. Being able to launch his special so quickly, inflicting half stats, doing fixed damage, but then also the half stats just help out the rest of your team to help knock out the opposing squads. You know, obviously Uta hits incredibly hard. The only real thing that I found kind of challenging with the Int team is that I don't really know who I want to use because I feel like Kid, Uta, and Moria are very safe choices, but as for the final Sugofest exclusive on the team, I'm really unsure as to what I would like to put. I think if I had my own Sugofest exclusive Apu, I probably would trial him because the additional CT for the Int squad is, is kind of impressive, to be honest. And then, you know, the final Rebel Rare Recruit, we have Konus on this team. You could use Ohm. I was trialing at Ohm in a couple of other teams, and Ohm seems really good. But then also, the bench is pretty much set in being Dory, Broggy, and Smoker. Those characters are so insane that... If you're building an int-driven team, or just an int team in general, you, you probably want to have Dory, Broggy, and Smoker on your team. They're just super, super good. But that's pretty much going to wrap up this first match as we have our int team uh, win pretty comfortably against the opposing uh, dex team here. You do see that the, uh, that the burst skill of the Uta is, is ready to go. And that is a little concerning because that Uta burst skill is no joke. It does a lot of damage. You'll see that this next match is going to be uh, my side team versus the opposing int team. And this was kind of good for me because this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted the opposing, uh, you know, Uta leader to use their burst skill on this, on this match because I knew for sure there was no way I was going to win this game. So we're just going to start the game. The opponent's going to use their burst skill. And then from there, we can just go ahead and, and, just, and just lose because this team is not going to win. But then we leave it with our final team to hopefully secure us our first win of the day. And that final match was, or the final game in this match, was my Dex team versus an opposing Quick team. And it feels relatively comfortable to do that. The only times that it doesn't feel comfortable when you're using Dex versus Quick is when it's the Quick-driven team. You know, characters like Shiki, Blue Jam, Porchemi. Those units in particular are so scary to go up against. Uh, particularly those Rumble Rare Recruits. They really do a number on a lot of teams, like the halving of stats and the really mass amount of damage that they can output against you is pretty pretty frustrating to deal with so uh you do see that they do have shiki they do have blue gem on the front line luckily no poor chemi so we're not really expecting too much to occur in terms of uh damage from those guys but still once again you have you know fixed damage coming in from tesoro coming in from kanjiro and then you know the typical units of kaido and akainu it's pretty typical stuff the way that I was planning to use and execute the GP burst skill is because of the way that it works where it does the 4,000 fixed damage like three different times. I wanted to use the uh, special of Blackbeard first, which does a significant health cut towards the opponent and also does fixed damage and stuff. And then I wanted to use the burst skill. There was no real reason to use it as 
soon as you start the game. I felt like using it once I had done a lot of damage to the opponent to get lots of knockouts was my idea heading into it. And honestly, it actually worked out kind of good. So I'll leave you guys with the rest of this match and we'll pick things up with game two. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a really odd looking striker based team that is doing quite well, at least from my experience, and that's exactly what we take on here in game two of, uh, of day three. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do here. Um, I ended up going with this quick driven team against it. Uh, looking back at it, probably not the best idea, but realistically, I actually don't know what I would have done in this scenario. Uh, you will see a little bit later that we do challenge a very similar team, and it actually works out quite well, so I think we may have found a way to get around it. Then again, it could just be a little bit situational, and it probably was, but we'll, we'll talk about it once we get to it a little bit later on. But, you know, this team, when you look at it at face value, while yes, it, it is scary because there's got characters like Kid and Roger Newgate and stuff, the fact that, you know, Kid launched his special so quick, he launched it in the first, what, 27 seconds? That's... That's pretty fast and really lucky for the opponent, you know, not only Kid getting his special ready, but then also just launching that said special that quickly is is pretty impressive, honestly. And you do see we are launching a lot of specials, but I've kind of realized here that the opponent is so bulky, they are not tanking as much damage as I thought they would. And you see fixed damage coming in from Tezor and Nikanjiro, and you got health cuts with Jack, and then it basically promotes the ability of Kid and Roger and Newgate to secure knockouts. And I don't think you really need much help for Kid and Newgate to secure knockouts, but it makes it a lot easier on the opponent for sure. And at this point in time, when I saw how bulky the opponent was after our range of specials, I knew for sure that we were just going to lose. I was hoping that the opponent actually launched the GP burst skill here of their Roger and Newgate during this team because I knew at this point there's no way I can win this one uh, so I really hope that they do use it here which will make the next game a little bit easier to deal with as we won't have to deal with such a significant health cut and I do believe they end up using the the health cut like literally right at the last second so that put me in a good mindset moving forward into the next matchup but uh, you will see that it actually didn't really make much of a difference because of what is the third team. And of course, we currently at this point have seven wins. When you reach seven wins, the last team on the opponent's squad will be hidden from you. So I didn't really know what to expect for the last team. So it doesn't really go my favor. And I really should have seen it coming, honestly. I don't know why I didn't realize what the last team was going to be but it didn't really work out, obviously. But we'll leave you guys with this, and we'll pick things up with the second match. So the second game in match two is just going to be the free spirit team, like Psy free spirit essentially, but also has Shanks crew. It didn't look like a very convincing team, so I felt comfortable using the int team against it, and yeah, it worked out quite well. And I do have my burst skill of Uta, but because I don't know what the last team was, even though I should have predicted exactly what the last team was, I ended up keeping the Uta burst for a little later. 
and uh, unfortunately for us, it's the fact that Uta can only use her burst skill once, whereas, you know, Roger and Wipey, they can launch their burst skill twice, which really comes back to bite us in the, in the third game of this match, really. But this was a pretty comfortable victory, honestly. There wasn't really a lot the opponent was doing that was harming us, and it just shows the power of Int Driven, really, that Int can kind of deal with just about anything this season pretty comfortably without too many qualms. Obviously, against opposing Int teams, it can be sketchy, and as I said, that striker base team could be pretty bad, depending on how the RNG of the match goes but then we move on to the final game which is the hidden team and due to the fact that roger and newgate if you actually know what their gp leader skill does and if you read what the rule set of the season was i don't know how i didn't see coming that the final team was going to be an int team but i was uh you know a little surprised because i just didn't realize it at the time but the last team is indeed an int team and we have to use our dex team against it and it doesn't really go according to plan so at this point moving forward after this game we end up switching things up and moving away from the uta leader for a more favorable matchup with roger's burst skill and i hate doing it i really really do but you know don't hate the player hate the game you know what i mean you just got to go with what fits and what actually works and what works during Grand Party is Roger's Burst. And yeah, people are definitely finding success with the Driven stuff as their GP leader. And I know a lot of people out there absolutely enjoy using Roger and Newgate as their GP leader. And I think that's completely fine and, and you know, more power to you. But the Roger Burst skill is incredibly busted and is by far and away the best Burst skill in the game. Like, it's just, it's not even close. There are, there are other Burst skills that are very good, no doubt. But Roger's Burst is way too insane. You know, the halving of stats to everyone, the guaranteed fixed damage to everyone. It's uh, it's too incredible, which is uh, definitely what we're going to be making use of once we get to the, uh, to, to the you know, the, the, the rematch, really. Because we do end up losing this one, unfortunately, because the in-team in is incredibly strong. But, uh, you know, we, we try and get some redemption with Goldie Roger. So I will leave you guys with this L and we'll pick things up with the rematch of uh, the second game of day three. So due to the really odd striker team that we just went up against with the second match, I didn't really want to go up against that again. So what I actually ended up doing is I ended up refreshing and I ended up using all of my refreshes because after I refreshed, I just found a bunch of Rogers and I refreshed again and then it was more Rogers. But there was this really odd looking kid leader sitting here and I did opt to go for it because when you see a quick team that isn't so driven focused, you know, it doesn't have Blue Jam, Porchemi, um, the Fujitora. Um, those specific teams are much more favorable matchups for Dex teams to completely destroy. So I saw that and I knew that was going to be a free win, absolutely. So at that point, it was just about us getting one additional win against... 
the int team or against whatever the final team was. And uh, that's exactly what happens here. We end up by uh, securing a pretty clean victory here, which is good. As, uh, you know, this is not really the best way to build quick teams anymore. Well, at least not in this season, right? Because of the fact that you know, Driven are just so so focused in this, in this matchup that you really want to try and build around the Driven squad. And I understand that not everyone is going to have, you know, Porchemi, Blue Jam, Fujitora. I myself have none of those three units. Would love to have them, of course. But uh, that is not meant to be, at least not right now. But of course, when we do get them, I definitely want to make a video about them because those units are just... They're very, very strong, and uh, even though they are so focused around just the classes of Driven and uh, and Powerhouse and or Powerhouse, they're not even focused on Quick at all. Just the fact that you can just inject them into these teams that are that have generic Driven characters just works so so well. So we end up picking up the first victory here of this match, and then we move on to game two, which is against that int team, because we do see Killer on it, and I opt to use my own int team against it. Now, I don't know really why I did it. Actually, no, I do know why I did it. So the reason why I did this is because, you know, I knew that the side team was not going to beat the opposing int team. So my ideology was, if I just do a mirror match, and I, I like, I feel like I have a better way to win if I do a mirror match versus using my side team. That was the thinking going into it. So we ended up just uh, using our int team here and, and hopefully securing the win. If not, we will have our Roger Burst for the final game. Now, we haven't even used the, the Burst yet, but whenever we do get it to activate, I feel like, you know, we're just going to use it straight away because even if all of our characters die, that's going to accumulate more than 55,000 damage, which will mean that Roger's Burst will be activated again. So I felt comfortable using the Burst, and if, even if we do lose, the Roger Burst will be activatable again when we get to the third game, and that is exactly what happened. But unfortunately, Fortunately for us, we did end up taking an L once again. Just driven, man. In driven. I absolutely hate facing this team. I understand why people are using this team, but it is such a pain to deal with. But it leaves us with our side team, which is not, you know, a favorable team to be using in this season due to the fact that Free Spirit received level 3 special CT down. However, you know, Wano Law is a thing, plus obviously you have Roger's GP leader skill, which does provide you with some additional CT increase. It does mitigate some of the rule set at least, so it makes the team a bit more favorable. And when I saw that the final team was a Dex team, I felt very comfortable using um, a pretty optimal side team, I would say. You know, using five legends probably isn't the most optimal way to build a team in Grand Party these days. But, you know, that's what we opted to do because I felt more comfortable using Roger plus Kuzan together rather than just having, you know, having to uh, drop one of these legends. Having all three of these, all four of these, or five of these legends at once is, is way better to deal with. So you do see I had the opponent's team up there and I was basically just going to use the Roger Burst whenever we're about to launch a special. And I will say that we do get a, a, like a little bit of good luck here because all of the opponent's characters stay relatively close together, which means that the special ability of Odin just, uh, it's, it's way more optimal for us, which is good. And obviously Yamato gets her special launch to do uh, more hits of, um, of, of uh, half stats. And then the, the, her special is just so, so strong, but it was really good. We got a really good arrangement of characters. And at this point it was basically going to be a win. So. I'll leave you guys with this clip and we'll pick it up with the final match of the video. <laughs> And then we get to the final match of the video, and it's going to be, once again, the Roger main versus a strength final tap kid leader. Yeah, I, I, I saw it, and I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, okay, well, that's going to be a free win, because I, I did look at what his burst skill does, and kid's burst skill, while the special itself is very good, the activation requirement is pretty harsh. In order to get it to launch, you need to guard a, a certain amount of attacks, and that's actually very difficult to do, and uh, not something that you can achieve very often. You have to really build for that. Um, so it, it, it ends up going quite well in our favor here. So we do see that it's like this really uh, obscure looking strength striker-ish team. 
and it does have Roger Whitebeard, which was a little concerning, but once again, we do get a little bit of good RNG in our favor here to, uh, to actually knock out most of the opponent's squad without too many issues, which is good. So I felt really comfortable heading into it. You know, I did see that the second team on the, on the opposing squad was a quick team. It did have Int Uta on it, but I wasn't too concerned about that. There's the fact that it was like basically just a full uh, quick team that we could take on with our Dex team felt really good. So the way that I was kind of thinking is that, you know, we could just go ahead and have our own Int team uh, towards the end of the match here. We can have our side team versus uh, this this strength team here because of Wano Law, which is able to debuff Driven and Powerhouse. A lot of Driven and Powerhouse on the opponent's side there. And we're able to pick up a pretty comfortable win um, no matter what. So that was good for, for starting us off. And then, of course, once I saw that we were able to get this win here, I felt super good because I, I didn't feel like we were going to lose the next match, especially whenever we get a Roger Burst as well. It's going to increase our chances of victory by a very high percentage, um, especially when the opponent doesn't really have a burst skill of their own that they can't activate. So that puts us in a very, very good spot. So then uh, we take on the next team, which I do end up speeding up just a little bit because the Dex team does take quite a while to get their, their stuff going. But then at the end, we did have an Int team and it was very likely that the final team of, of, of the opponent squad was going to be an Int team. So it would have come down to you know Int versus Int once again. But the fact that it would be Int versus Int, kind of a mirror match and I have a Roger Burst skill and he doesn't. It means that we're probably going to win that one. I would I would think anyway. But, you know, stranger things have happened in Grand Party. So that is pretty much going to wrap it up here. And due to the fact that we hit nine wins in total for the season thus far, we, we actually get a, a Legend ticket. So towards the end of this video, you will see the Legend ticket that was pulled. So that is going to wrap it up from me. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Other than that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video. ほんな補充機能を集まる。I'm not